Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today's topic is what is a ridiculously happy wife and how do you become one part two. Instead of an interview, today I'm sharing part two of the recording from a live Empowered Wife session from my paid programs, where we focus on practicing a specific skill and students share how they're applying the skill in their unique situation. And we workshop it together to get her the best, fastest improvement in her relationship. This Empowered Wife session that I'm sharing with you today is on how to RSVP not attending when you're invited to an argument. Now, the worst relationship advice of the week award is on hiatus until next week, and then it will be back to recognize a truly dreadful recommendation. In last week's podcast, I shared the first half of the Empowered Wife session, and now I'm sharing part two. So if this is your first Empowered Wife podcast, I suggest you stop right here, listen to episode number 83. What is a ridiculously happy wife and how do you become one? Part one. It's hard to explain in words how fortifying it is to be part of this tribe. It's something you just have to experience for yourself, which is why I wanted to share part two of this empowered wife session with you to give you a taste. All of the women on this audio recording knew beforehand that this session was being recorded so I could share it here on the podcast. And they generously and authentically shared just as they always do. Here's a taste of what it's like to be part of a community of women who are invested in being ridiculously happy wives. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. All right. Uh, Lacey is here. Lacey's back. Lacey in the house. <laughs> hey, Lacey. I am. I came back to my, uh, my uh, booster shot. So. All right. Good to see you. So um, I think somebody had said it earlier, but um, we have a peaceful, loving atmosphere in our house too, thanks to the skills. But one of the things that um, I'm working on is, so there's duct tape, right? But I'm trying to use um, the skills to quiet what's going on in my mind. So it's one thing, you know, to have that self-control, which is very effective and needed in the beginning, but I'm wanting to go a step deeper. And really the, the only thing that I feel like repeatedly um is an issue is surrounding parenting um and i've done some work to figure out like what why do i feel you know if it's contrasting why do i want to control it where's the fear and then kind of examining okay i'm afraid that he'll make the wrong decision obviously but i'm not a child psychologist <laughs> no i'm just doing what he's doing, you know, winging it as we go along. And there's no evidence that he's made a decision that has created, you know, catastrophic effects with the kids. But um, I think the hardest thing for re- me right now is we have, we're parenting an adult child who's about to turn 20. And I don't think you're ever really prepared for that. <laughs> it's a different challenge. And even in applying the skills, it's, to, to my relationship with her, we, we have a very close relationship, but if anybody's had a 20 year old, you know, that can change literally like on a dime. <laughs> in one minute. So one of the things that I have a hard time with is sometimes the way she'll interact or the things that she'll say to either myself or my husband, I just find so disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And when she was younger, I felt like we were 
both on the same page. Like we had certain standards in our house. Like you can say whatever you want. It just has to be in a respectful tone. And we kind of had this like credo in our family. But now as she's gotten older and I recognize like developmentally what's going on, but I'm still kind of in this trepidation. Like I don't, you, you can't talk to me like that or you can't talk to your dad like that. So he has gotten like very kind of upset with me because if I, and well, if she and I start not yelling or anything, but having a disagreement, um, he'll want to quiet us both down, which feels very patronizing to me. I'm, I don't feel like I'm her peer. <laughs> like I'm still the parent this is my house. Um, and then he will interact with her in a way that on the surface felt very, I don't, um, kind of placating and also I felt like didn't assign me honor. And so anyways, mm-hmm. I've stopped interjecting with that and I walk away, but I still feel those feelings inside. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there should be more standing up for me or they should, he should be shutting that down. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at the things that you mentioned and um, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out like how I can apply those so that it's more than just walking away that I'm, you know, I'm peaceful on the inside, not just on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like, um, you're looking for ways. It does sound, uh, this sounds really hard having having a 20 year old (laughs) in general, right. Pretty challenging. And then feeling like she's, uh, not being held to the, the culture, the tradition that you've established long established in your home of being respectful. And you're trying to hold it. And, and we usually had that for so long when they were yeah, young. I'm a little confused yeah. by this, this switch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does sound uh, really frustrating. And so first of all, I just want to celebrate and acknowledge you for, you've got a problem with your daughter, it sounds like, but you're not making it into a marriage problem. One problem you don't have. I hear loud and clear, a peaceful home, calm and peaceful home. Thanks coaching calls. I'm not making it a marriage problem. So yeah, really yeah. I think that's pretty exciting. I do. But, and there's more to go, right? We still, we want to have our best relationships and in the, in the best family culture. Um, and so, and we're not into sucking it up. It sounds like there's a little bit of sucking up that kind of has to go on, uh, which is. Yeah, there is. There is. Fun. Yeah. So, and so which of the, did any of the strategies kind of resonate as like, this is something I could use in that moment? Well, if I can, in listening, well, a lot of them actually, um, well, number one gratitude that he has, you know, he's involved in the parenting and he, he has a different way maybe, but he's definitely doing, you know, he's invested. So I'm very grateful, you know, to him to have an involved father and, um, Mm. I also feel like if I can get over, you know, myself basically in the end, his way is usually more effective with her. And I, I had, I recognized last time that he's dealing with her almost like he interacts with me, which at first I didn't like, but now she's a young woman instead of a child. And so for me, when I'm emotional or upset or vulnerable, he really does just kind of, you know, there's not the disrespect anymore, thank goodness, but he lets me just, you know, and he doesn't interrupt me or, and sometimes he'll just, well, he's just always very loving. And so the last time it happened, I thought, well, if I can remove myself out of the situation and feeling indignant, right, just indignant about it, he's doing to her what I would want done to me. And she isn't a little girl anymore. And it, it really is in the end more effective. Um, so sweet, Lacey. So, you know, that's really good, but I still don't want her to talk to me. Like that. Yeah. So. So, so there's like, there's three papers kind of in this situation, right? Yeah. There's not just two papers overlapping yet. Three papers. I think I am almost hearing. So, so if you had a magic wand and you could wave it, how would you change this whole situation? I think I would still want him to interact with her like that, but quickly saying, you know, don't talk to your mother like that, you know, like becoming more assertive with her. Um, And when I've talked to him about this in the past, 
he has said, well, you have to give me a chance. This is when I would interrupt, you know, you're involved and then I can't. So now I've been stepping back. Sometimes I actually have to go out of the house because I can't con- like control the earth <laughs> to just shut that down. Um, so a lot of times I don't really know like what that preliminary part is. I know that the end result is she's always calm and they've come, you know, come to a solution, but I think it's just hurts my feelings because in his presence, if it were anyone else, I know that he would shut it down. Or if she was talking to anyone else like that, like maybe his mom, I mean, she would never do that, but he would never have that. And I just feel like, the same honor, you know, really, if I'm being honest, like I want that same honor to, to go to me, but I can't control that. Right. So, you know, yeah. I, it's interesting. Cause I think, I think I'm almost hearing. So, so we have a magic wand and it was interesting. You didn't want to use it to have your daughter be more respectful. You wanted your husband to have your back <laughs> with your daughter. Is that right? Yeah, maybe the second ding would be okay. You have two. You have two. Okay, okay, okay. That's good. Yeah, we can have two magic wands. <clears throat> so, um, so what I hear is your daughter being respectful to you is actually secondary to him uh, protecting you. That's your bigger. Yeah, I think yes, yes. Okay, okay. and um, so when this happens, you get upset with both of them, really. And hurt by both of them, it sounds like. Right, and, right. and you and you gotta leave the house. Uh, which I think is so smart, by the way. Good good for you for right. That's a lot of yeah, sometimes oh. the faith isn't strong enough. I after. bet, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> You're a mere mortal woman, right? So yeah. Okay, so back to the so back to the strategy. So so the gratitude, your gratitude that you gave you talked about with your husband is beautiful. Um, about him being an involved parent. And um and I hear uh, just a real tender spot here, right? That there's, uh, yeah, a part of you that gets hurt. You get hurt when this happens. And he knows about that? He does. And our, um, our productive conversations have really kind of gone back to him explaining to me, this has, you know, nothing to do with, of course, I want her to respect you. Of course, I, you know, I just, I'm trying to calm her down first is what he's, you know, saying. So I guess, you know, just going back to the evidence of how much he does love me and he shows it on a regular basis and he shows protection and providing for me all the time and just not maybe putting all the eggs, you know, just on this one. Somehow I've got to figure out a way not to let that hurt my feelings and not make it personal Hmm. because logically I know it's not, but in the moment, the emotion of it feels, I feel attacked, you know, I just, yeah. Yeah. So I need to somehow reframe it in my mind so that, yeah, like that it goes more from logic to down to my heart in that moment. Yeah. I totally get that. And you just, uh, just kind of reminded me, like I know for me, when um, the situations where I get the most hurt by what somebody else says are the ones where I already have a little bit of a vulnerability, like something I already, I'm already kind of walking around with like, oh yeah, I, that might be true of me. Or, yeah, there's definitely a vulnerability in this area for me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like, more important to me probably than anything else as far as like the loyalty protection that type of thing so i do recognize that yeah so um are you uh, showing that vulnerability you come in with vulnerability when this happens because no i usually well in the past he probably did. I don't, I'm not really displaying that towards him in the past i would come off as uh, not combative, but, you know, aggress- like not aggressive, but, you know, I was going forward into the situation instead of moving out. I do, I do remember once where that, like one of the first times that I duct taped and I went into the other room, um, that was like, he immediately said something in my defense, whereas typically he didn't, but I kind of, I do recognize now that 
he couldn't really defend me while I was defending myself. So, you know, maybe I just need to give him the chance, but I think I'm still kind of afraid, like, well, what if he doesn't that whole thing? So maybe a little bit faith over fear needs to be practiced there. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I love that, Lacey. I, I feel like I could probably just put my feet on my desk right here because you really have uh, your own answers, right? You, you were quick to go to the gratitude and now I hear the vulnerability and you wanting to choose your faith. And uh, also that, uh, yeah, when you're defending yourself, the thing you want the most, right, is for him to protect you and, and defend you, but you're, but you're also kind of crowding space. Right. It sounds like, and I, I can relate to that. I mean, when I used to like go after the hapless store clerks with my rage or whatever, my husband didn't need to protect me because I was already, I already had my sword drawn and I was, you know, as, but, but now, yeah, it's, he's so quick. If I, if he sees me vulnerable, that's when he's real quick to uh, go get in there and, you know, see what he can do to protect me. So, so I think I hear you saying you, you want to bring some vulnerability. It, it sounds like with both of them, maybe with your daughter and with your husband. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. I guess is, do you feel like the vulnerability? So I think maybe I miss, I confused it a little bit in the past. I think I was trying to be vulnerable by explaining to him how I felt, but I think he would get defensive. Like, of course I love you. Of course I'm going to protect you, you know, but this is our daughter. I don't need to protect you. I just need to solve this problem over here. But maybe it's more of a demonstration, the vulnerability of just like walking away. What about now? As far as like, like, I feel like he knows, but sometimes that does cause a defensive reaction in him. Like if I'm like discussing it with him. So what would be another way that I could bring the vulnerability without him feeling accused? of not doing something. So what about an ouch? How would that be? I don't even, yeah. Well, I'm not sure they would like, maybe I could try it. I I, I could try it. I feel like sometimes the situation is tumultuous and I don't know if you wouldn't hear it or they would hear it. Do you know what I mean? Like the focus is like all over here, but especially since he's not directly like saying or doing anything to me, but I, I could definitely try it. Yeah, that oh, the ouch would be for him, and not for, for her. I guess either one of them. Yeah, either one of them in that moment, right? Mm-hmm. I, I guess, um, yeah. So, so what I hear is the duct tape has been great uh, for keeping you out of maybe defending or controlling. Mm-hmm. Um, and now there's like another level. The next level of the video game is for you to. Um, to really honor Lacey in that moment, which is like, Hey, I'm not okay. I'm really not okay right now. You've been having to go off and just make yourself okay. Right. And that doesn't feel, that doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel intimate. Doesn't feel connected. Right. Right. And so, um, but in some ways, you know, saying I'm not okay. Right. Is a little different than um, just not being okay. Just like, right, right. The show. yeah. So I hear you wanting to go to the next level. Yeah, I'll try the ouch and we'll see how that goes. So yeah, yeah, I think it sounds. I think it sounds. I mean, it's so perverse. I'm like, that sounds exciting, but I, but I just know I really just like what's on the other side of running through that waterfall of fear, especially with vulnerability, finding out what's over there, and feeling indescribably loved, even when I'm just a train wreck. Can't quite, you know, explain why I'm so upset that you know mm-hmm. my daughter spoke to me disrespectfully or whatever. But it doesn't matter. Like that's, that's, uh, yeah, it's part of what my husband fell for about me is that um, I have that, that soft underbelly too. And I just am imagining it. same with your husband. Yeah. He's pretty great. So yeah, he sounds pretty great. He sounds pretty <laughs> great. And I, I give you so much credit for um, bringing out his greatness. Thank you. It's, yeah, it's, I owe a lot to you. Um, four years ago when I found your book. So thank you very much. It's been it's been a really great journey. So awesome. So glad we found each other. Thank yeah, you. likewise. Thank you for help with this one. I appreciate it. You bet. My pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Thank Sharing you. so authentically. All right. And Katie is here. Hey Katie. 
Hey, Laura. Hey, Coach Darlene and everybody. Um, really, really funny. I opened my journal to, to like write this stuff down and the page fell out, like actually fell out of the journal into my lap. That was the last terrible fight we had, which was February 20th. And I wrote down all the things that he said. And I haven't gone back and looked at this until just, just now. And it's like, I can see all the heart messages now. And like, just really, I, I'm amazed that that happened, but also maybe not a little. <laughs> and our house, I wouldn't call it happy and peaceful, but we're not having those fights anymore. This is the day after that, that I found your book. Wow. Um, wow. So we're in kind of the stage where, it's just distant and quiet and he doesn't really like the things I'm saying. Um, he says, I don't know what to say to you anymore. I feel defeated. Um, I don't like it when you tell me those things kind of when I give the gratitudes, but I'm going off and making myself happy and um, kind of just living my life. And I'm not, I'm not really taking the bait, but in a way it's like flying all around me and it's, I'm a little bit like, when is this going to end? <laughs> you know, like, when is this awful quiet? But that's all his paper. You know, it's like, he's told me he's depressed. He's this, he's that, uh, just unhappy. And I've never not tried to fix it until now. So here I am um, mm. doing this. And I, I'm wondering, you know, kind of maybe if I'm missing some pieces or uh, he just is not receiving what I'm giving, you know, very very much so okay okay well congratulations that's almost four months uh since there was that kind of fight it sounds like yeah. so something big changed at your house he's you, shaking a lot of ground it sounds like from it was a bad one and it will that's never that's never gonna happen again wow wow and i give you all the credit for that he probably hasn't read any books or no. right <laughs> <laughs> it's all you it's all Thanks. katie <laughs> yeah, Darlene's clapping for you. I'm clapping for you too. Uh, so, so I think that's tremendous. And then, and I hear that it's um, it's not relaxed and comfortable at your house right now. It's uh, feels kind of awkward and heavy and tense. And um, and there's this like the old debate is he's depressed and he doesn't like your gratitude. So, um, sounds a little stifling, right? That yeah, you can't you can't really be yourself. It feels like maybe. Yeah, but I can with my kids and stuff. So I so I am anyway, you know. And I'm kind of just okay. saying things okay. like last, you know. I'm like, oh, I had so much fun last night because I went to dance class. Darlene knows. Uh, so much fun last night. Oh, it's awesome. And I just keep saying these things. I get no response back or anything. But I'm just going for it because oh, love that, <laughs> love that. Good for you. What else is there to do? But just like make yourself ridiculously happy, right? So. So that's fantastic. And we want the whole thing. We want the whole enchilada here. So that's what we're doing. And uh, we're not going to, we don't give up until you get your birth right, which is to have that uh, squishy, mushy, lovey, you know, happy um, house that you want to have with him. So, um, and so now here you're, you're bringing this, uh, you're having that kind of interaction with your kids right now, that there's happy connected and that, but it just isn't there with him. And uh, so, so did any of the the game plans that we talked about uh, resonate for you? Well, I mean, being the goddess of fun and light is is n newer to me, I think, and it's just it's it's turning on a lot more. Um, I have been doing a lot of I hear yous been doing a lot I, I'm, I'm I feel like I'm doing a lot of these but maybe I'm still guarded like maybe I'm still um love this Katie. I'm like love a little it. afraid of being hurt you know so sure. I'm, I'm a little right. like I got kind of a wall maybe and yeah. I don't really know what to do to break it down of course uh, I mean I sound sound like a mere mortal woman to me right mm -hmm. yeah he got hurt so um but I love this that you pulled, you've tuned into Goddess of Fun and Light because uh, one of the things, uh, one of the stories that comes to mind is I, I remember another student in a similar situation who uh, decided to go on a smile campaign. Have you heard about smile campaigns? Hmm. you know about this? Okay. So every time he'd come through the door, she'd be like, happy to see him. I'm like, hey, 
hey, you're home. And uh, and I actually had another student. Do you have dogs? Do you have any dogs? No dogs. Okay, it's all right. So anyway, she she had dogs and they would run to the door when he got home. The dogs would. So she started running to the door with the <laughs> dogs. And at first he was like, whoa, you know, like, what are you doing here? But it really made a difference that he um, knew that she was happy to see him. So I'm just wondering in terms of something concrete to do, because it's pretty hard to just start being the goddess of fun and light, right? Like I love specifics. I love practical. Like I know if I did it or not kind of thing. And I hear you saying it, it feels a little scary right now to be goddess in fun and light. So uh, how would it be to be happy to see him every time you see him? I get a lot of opportunities. Comes and goes a lot. Oh, does. <laughs> so, oh, does <laughs> okay. I like, get a lot okay. of opportunities. So I, I, I would like to try that. I think that yeah. that would, that would make it because I am naturally like that, like kind of like mad faced uh, woman is not really me. I'm, I'm, I'm not that person. I'm, yeah. I'm more like, Hey, like that's more me. Um, and it kind of got lost, you know, in the last, um, seven ish, eight, maybe seven years or so, uh, with all the responsibilities of the kids and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the okay. kids do it. They run daddy. Oh, they do. Okay. So, so it's not the dogs. It's the kids. It's the kids. You could just join the kids. <laughs> You're home. But you know, actually what my holdup is, is that I don't know, like normally I would like hug or kiss, but he doesn't seem to like want that. So I don't know like what I'm like, Hey, <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, sounds pretty scary, right? Mm-hmm. Sounds like a risk. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how would it be to experiment, which is being the real Katie, which it sounds like is just a happy, like, ah, kind of like a Muppet, <laughs> right? Which I relate. I'm like a Muppet too. I'm the same way. And my husband comes and goes a lot too. And I, we, I, every time I'm like, ah, you know, like, there you are. Sounds like that's where you want to live. Yeah. So I get that it's scary, but you seem pretty brave to me. Thanks. This is a great practical step. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. I want to hear how it goes. It's going to be a big adventure. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, you're doing great. All right. So let's talk to Darcy. Darcy's here. Hey. Okay. Hi. There we go. Hi. Um, it's good to be here. Thank you so much. So I'm so happy oh. to be here, Lauren. Thank you. And Thanks. Darlene, I always just look at you and think, ah, oh, Darlene's so cute. It's so fun to see her on the call. <laughs> oh, thank you. She is. She is. I feel the same way about Darlene. Oh, but, um, okay. So just like the others, things are going um, so much better since I found the skills. We used to fight a lot. And I maybe a similar time frame, maybe about February. And really since then, there have been no big fights. So that's so good. But the things that... Um, I don't know. I had some similar issues with the others, but one that I thought I would choose is sometimes I feel like it's a complaint from him. Maybe that if I'm not doing what he wants me to be doing as far as cleaning, um, we're in a big remodel right now. And so he's, he's working hard and it's been a couple of years and I know he's working so hard. So I, part of this could just be, he's feeling a little resentful because he's doing so much work and um, he wants me to, you know, declutter the basement and clean out all this. And, and I do want to do all of that, but I also feel a little unappreciated for what I'm doing with the kids and running. And, and he doesn't seem to, sometimes I feel like I'm only appreciated for the work I do. Mm. And the other stuff, I feel a little like he's not seeing that or um, anyway. So that seems to be one that's kind of come up around in our marriage is <laughs> if I feel a little lazy and I don't think I'm lazy. I do a lot, but that's the impression I get. So yeah, it feels pretty yucky to I mean, gosh, just being a mom, such a huge, exhausting job, right? It takes a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. Um and I just when I think about cleaning out the basement, I just want to go take a nap myself. So <laughs> I'm I'm with you. So so what I hear is that the bait is like he'll say, How about if you clean out the basement? And you're like, Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get to that. But really you're feeling kind of unappreciated. Yeah. And it will usually kind of come after he'll ask me to do something. Sometimes I even get defensive right then, which is kind of my problem. I've been trying to deal with. Sometimes I get defensive, even if he just asks me to do something before I even 
he's even, you know, and I have played around with the, I can't before I get defensive. And so that's been better. That's been better. Or, um, but yes, yeah, so sometimes the bait comes right with the question, right? With the asking. Yeah. Or sometimes it, sometimes it yeah. comes after the fact, if he'll say, I can tell he's been harboring a little resentment because he'll say, well, I asked you to do this and you didn't do this. But this comes after like, this comes up in a big argument, you know, then all of a sudden this comes out and like, oh, you know, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so one question I have is, um, I love that you said I can't actually, can you clean, can you declutter the basement? Is that? Well, yes. So that's what I, he did ask me a while ago about, he gave me kind of a, a list of things he would like done. And I did take this to the Facebook group. And one of them was the, the garage. And I just told him, I said, I'm happy to work on all this, but I, I can't do the garage. <laughs> and uh, because I knew that was a big, too big for me and it's his stuff and I would be resentful. And he just kind of said, Oh, you can't. And I said, no, no, I can't. <laughs> so, so good for so that good. one. And he didn't, you know, he hasn't baited with me that since he seemed a little annoyed in that moment, but he hasn't said anything now with the basement and other things. Yes. I, I can do that. And I'm trying to kind of chunk it down. I can do it, but not at the expense of all of, you know, being resentful or that. So I'm trying to chunk it to what I can do. So yeah. One of yeah. the skills I thought is to maybe to listen and to hear what he's asking and to really um, maybe say, I hear you and then think about, is this something I can do? Maybe. Yeah, I love that. I guess I'm just, um, so first of all, great job with saying I can't. I feel like that's the hardest two words sometimes for, for can-do yeah. women, right? To utter is, yes. is vulnerable. So I love that you have been experimenting with that. And then... Um, I, I guess I'm just kind of mapping, you know, your situation onto my own thing. And uh, we just moved and we had to do a bunch of decluttering too. And uh, for, for the most part, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was like, I, 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 if someone, you know, if my husband asked me to declutter the basement, I would just be like, whoa, no, I, I, I yeah, I can't. No, I can't. Mm-hmm. So um, I love that you said no about the garage. I can't for the garage. And, um, and I would say there's, there's just kind of a culture at my house too that um, that he does stuff like that. I think that's we sort of established that. And I used to be, I used to be more like, yeah, I'm gonna declutter the base, you know, whatever. I, I take on all that stuff and then get kind of resentful too. So, um, so anyway, I hear you being a lot more thoughtful about taking care of Darcy. And then- yes, I yeah, I am trying to, and not to be, um, not to feel guilty about it. I, I do also recognize how much he is, he is doing and yeah, like yeah. he's working. So, I mean, he's just, you wouldn't even believe this remodel that he's doing. So oh, wow. he, is, he is working so hard. And so I have tried to show a lot of gratitude towards that. And I did think, you know, maybe, maybe I can't, but then showing lots of gratitude for what he is doing. I love that. I love that. And I, I hear it sounds very authentic that you're really um, seeing how hard he's working and that you're bringing a lot of appreciation uh, to him. Is that right? Is he? Yes. And that is that about is, that. Yes. Yeah. And that is helping. I still just struggle. I mean, it's been way better. I don't think we've had a fight about it. I just still struggle thinking, I bet he's thinking I'm not doing enough because this is what's happened in the past. And he's not really saying that. I just think, oh, he's probably thinking this or I get start feeling guilty. I teach school. So this is my summertime. And I feel like he, you know, expects a lot more in the summertime because I have all this time, but I also want to be happy and fun and have, have, yeah, probably enjoying your kids and they're out of school too, I bet. Right. So, yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, um, I'm wondering, um, I love all this by the way. It's not, I mean, it sounds really good. It sounds like there's a lot of peace and it's partly because you've been saying no and you have the guilt coming up, which I think is pretty common. I think, can we have a show of hands here for people that feel guilty when they say I can't to, okay right? To like, you know, can you help me? Right. So it's, but, but I think the, the payoff I'm hearing is, uh, sounds like your marriage is pretty good. Yes. It's, it is going much better. Okay. And I am, and I have start. I mean, I have been, I have been declaring the basement these last couple of weeks, but in very like chunks, like, because I recognize that it's something he probably can't do with all the other stuff he's doing. So I've just been doing in chunks, but then <clears throat> I've still, still been doing lots of calls and self-care and taking care of me. And I, I think it's going better. He hasn't complained. I just, I guess I just am still waiting because this has been such a common 
Yeah. <laughs> you I just am waiting yeah. for him to come back and say, ah, oh, you know, I yeah. just, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a, I have a kind of a, a crazy idea, but I'll just throw it out and see if maybe it fits for you. But um, how would it be to bring this challenge to him, to your big strong man, right? And just say, you know what? I Can I borrow your brain? I am feeling so guilty that I'm not making more progress on the basement. I know this is really important to you that I get this done. And I, it's my summer vacation. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, I also want to have a lot of fun with the kids or whatever. And I just, I feel like it's going so slow and I, and I feel guilty and I, I just don't, I don't know how I can get it all done or, or whatever's true for you. I'm making up some stuff. You don't have to yeah. take that on, but uh, in your words, uh, how would that conversation be for you? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it would be very similar to what you said just to maybe, yeah, maybe say, could I borrow your brain? Exactly that, that I want to do this for you, but I also really want to enjoy my summer and have fun with the kids. I told him before, I do think that's really important more so than he seems to think just the fun, you know? Yeah. Say, so I'm trying to yeah. balance all this and maybe, maybe do you have any, do you have some ideas for me? <laughs> or- yeah. 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 Do you, yeah. What do you think? Right. Do you have any ideas? Um, Cause I just know my husband loves to help solve my challenges and unburden me and make my load lighter. So I'm just, I'm just curious to see, and it'd be kind of courageous, right? Cause you'd be walking right into that guilt, right into the thing that feels like the bait. You'd be bringing it up yourself, right? So does it sound scary to bring up? Yeah, it does sound scary. However, I mean, at the first of the skills, all of this sounded scary, but now it does seem so much more doable. Like the, at the first, just even apologizing or even SFPs. Now I feel like I can throw them out. And so it's gotten so much easier to do all of this. So I think I could do this. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, great job. It sounds like you're using SFPs, lots of skills going on at your house and apologizing is a hard one. So, so yeah, uh, I will. I think that's a good idea to take it to him. I did hear one thing and I, a call yesterday from mm, one of the coaches said that and I've never done this before is she will kind of find out her husband's expectations for how summer days will go. Like she'll kind of ask him before, like, what are you thinking as far as the kids and, and that, and I thought that was maybe a good idea so that I don't just get mad after the fact is maybe, maybe I could do a borrow your brain. Like this is hard to manage in the summertime kids chores and everything. Like, what are you, what do you think maybe? Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you have your own desires around that? Um, Yes, I just want, I would just want to have more fun than he would want to have. Okay, okay. I do think I need to hear him and I know that things need to be done too. I know we need to teach responsibility and all of that. So for me, it would be a, a balance because I tend to lean more into the summertime. Let's go have fun. <laughs> yeah, well, that sounds great to me. <laughs> so I'm sure, I bet that's a big part of what he fell in love with. Yes. Is that you? Yeah, oh, that goes maybe. I hope so, because I was like that. So that's true. That's a good reminder. So Yeah. Yeah. So you're bringing, you're upholding a big, valuable piece of the relationship by um, bringing that fun, too. Wow. I, I consider that. Well, thank uh, you for that. Really Those important. Things for, me to re- yeah. Those things for me to remember. So, yes. Yeah, so I think I'll keep doing gratitude. I like that. Can I borrow your brain? I think that would, I think he likes that, because I have always been you know, how we all, a lot of us are, is I'll just do it. I just do it. I'll just take care of everything. And so I will stop and ask him. I think he would appreciate that. And have you had any fun so far this summer? Yes, I've been having fun. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So that it might be, um, I might be part of the conversation too. Like, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate, like how much fun I've been having. Yeah. I make it, it's making me really happy. Oh, Is I that- like that. Yeah. 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 So, okay, cool. Cause, um, yeah, you seem like you have a fun spark. And so that's, that's worth, uh, that's worth preserving. For well, sure. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Cause sometimes, you know, I start feeling like, ah, I got to do this work, 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 work. Yeah. 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 No fun. No fun. So, so I like those ideas. So thank you so much. Okay. Well, good stuff, Darcy. Congratulations on the transformation in your marriage. Sounds oh, pretty thank dramatic. you. Yeah. All right. Well, I, it's, it's all to you. So thank you. Oh. I just, now I can't believe how I couldn't see it before, but <laughs> I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'm glad we found each other. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you. All right. I want to call on someone whose name is in Arabic, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Hello. 
Oh yeah. Um, sorry, I I did that from one of my daughter's Arabic classes. Oh, um, so cool. I, it's to Amina, Amina Musa. Amina, nice. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Good. Thanks. Um. Yeah. Thank you for calling on me. Um. So, uh, I guess my bait is um a challenge that kind of goes on and off. So um, sometimes um, my age, uh, my husband sleeps, sleeps in another bedroom and um, uh, it's hard not to take that personally. Um, mm-hmm. So I've tried in the past, you know, saying I miss you and then that has worked, um, but not enough for it to be like consistent um, where he's consistently. And so I... <laughs> I was trying to look at these um, different suggestions that you had, and um, I was thinking about the heart message. Um, the heart message, when I was listing out different um, baits, they all kind of tie together, which is kind of like maybe my husband's worn out, he's burnt out. So, um, so I'm maybe you know if uh like if he falls asleep with the with you know in bed kids at that time then um i'm waiting for him and um maybe maybe he doesn't want to disturb me disturb my sleep so or maybe he um you know maybe he um wants a little bit of alone time or maybe, you know, um, uh, you know, like last night or the night before it was because his back was hurting. And so in the uh, guest bedroom, there's a firmer mattress. Um, so, but it always seems like there is an excuse. It always seems like there's a reason. And, you know, it's, I feel lonely, um, you know, when I'm, Mm. even if I'm really tired of course I just it's nice to know that he's there and obviously there'd be opportunities to cuddle and things like that if he was there but he's not so I don't know if the heart message is maybe something or yeah Yeah, so what I'm hearing is the bait is the distance that he's kind of uh, removed and distant and not sleeping in bed which yeah. is lonely and yeah. painful. And I love, I love yeah. the vulnerability and yeah. talking. I just, yeah, I remember those days. And it's, yeah, it's no fun. It did feel painful. And I love that you gravitated to heart message and started looking for, maybe it's just about his back or maybe, yeah, maybe he doesn't want to wake me up. And you're looking for the almost things you could be express gratitude about, it sounds like. So, um, mm-hmm. I guess so. One of my questions, and so, in the relationship, I could. oh, go ahead. I, I mean, I could, I could. There's always an opportunity to be grateful. So I, there, I there I always is. Sum and sum up if you there, you there always go down is. that road. But yeah, is it? And so, the in the relationship overall feels pretty distant. Is that do I have that right? Um, I mean, it feels like during the daytime we have moments of you know. There'll be a tender kiss here and there, um, but it's not, I'm not feeling emotionally. Yeah, you don't feel loved really and adored. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like we're functioning in a practical, on a practical level. Um, um, it's gotten a lot better and, you know, um, I think the last time I spoke to you, I was pregnant and I had three children. Now I have four. So um, it's, it's been, yeah. So we're, we're managing all of this like stress um, and I'm trying, I'm putting a lot of conscious effort to manage the stress and do the self care and all of that. And um, you know, I, I think that, that, that there is, so it's like there is a level of, of peace, but it's also, yes, like you said, um, was that I do feel that distance um, from him. Like, for example, like maybe in the evening, um, if the girls go to bed early and the babies 
sleeping. This is what usually might happen is I'll hear like a little ding, ding, ding from downstairs and he's doing his vocabulary. Uh, he like likes to learn different languages. And so he's playing games downstairs and I'm upstairs waiting for him. He doesn't show up. I'll sleep. Okay. Wake up. He's gone. Okay. He's not in bed. Okay. Then I go and look for him. So now I'm looking for him. Well, you know, it's hard not to feel, you know, sometimes I get emotional. Like this morning, I just, I found him in the other room. And I just stood and stared at him and I didn't know what to say, you know, and he could tell I was there, but he wasn't saying anything. Yeah. And then I, I just started crying because I got overwhelmed. And then um, he said, what's wrong? Like he thought something happened. I'm like, do I need to explain? <laughs> and he was like, oh gosh. He, he knew, like, oh, there she goes. She's going to be upset. And so, and so he just put a pillow over his head. I'm like, oh, man, I thought he was going to come to bed now, but he didn't. Then I just went, you know, and I left. So, because I didn't want to make, I didn't want to, like, in the past, I would have pushed him. I would have said, you know, this really hurts me. You're hurting me. Why are you doing this? Like, you promised me when we first got married that we would always eat together and sleep together. You said this, you know. That would be me in the past. And sometimes it creeps up. But sure. I really try to res- like refrain. Because mm. I'm trying to also honor myself. Like I find it degrading that I would have to explain myself at this point. Like it's pretty yeah. obvious, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. You know, there's the duct tape. And then there's, you know, holding back. But then sometimes I feel like I can't even just be myself. You know, I'm trying so hard to do all of these things. Yes. And yes. You know, it's like a lot That's of fair. efforts being put on like doing all these skills. And and then in the end, I still feel like a little like empty and lonely in that. Oh, it sounds really yeah. rejecting and miserable, lonely. And I'm sorry yeah. to hear you're going through that. And uh, I still Thank remember you. how that felt. And I don't want that for you. So um, you. whenever I hear, yeah, of course, whenever I hear four kids, including a baby. My first question is, how's your self-care going? So my self-care um, was very bad, actually, um, because I took the bait when my husband made threats. Um, and uh, and so I went on overdrive trying to be super, super mom. And then I crashed and um, I had like a nervous breakdown. So I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I am going to focus on my self-care. And that's what I was doing before. But I took the bait and I got myself in trouble. And then a couple weeks ago, same thing as the um, Pink Darcy before me. So my husband called me lazy. Um, and I know that's not true about myself. In the past, I would have fallen for it. I know that's not true about myself. I know how hard I work, but I won't go to the um, point of a mental breakdown um, just so that he won't call me that. No, I'm not going to fall for that. So I, I do, I do try to keep my self care as a priority in, in terms of not necessarily always like frivolous things because I don't have like necessarily time for that. But like yeah. um, I started an indoor garden. I, oh. Um, I try to be present with my children when I'm homeschooling them. And that actually gives me a lot of joy. Um, and um, just Wait a basic stuff that I would neglect, like um, brushing my hair. This is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> you know, brushing my hair. I hear that. Yeah. Um, like my daughter the other day, I was like upset with my husband. She, Mom, you're brushing your teeth really fast. It's like, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm a little bit of sorry. Now I'm trying to calm down. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I but think yeah, it, I mean, I try to do the basics, you know, for the self care. And, and I think sleep is really important and solitude. So those are my two things. Very really good. Important. Very good. So yeah. important to a mom of a baby, right? To get solitude and, yeah. and sleep and yeah. Um, if, if you were going to do frivolous self care, Amina, what would it be? Um, I don't know. For some reason, when I ride my bike, I get really happy because I kind of feel like I can just leave all my worries behind me, and I'm, you know, the wind's oh. on my face, and it just feels really nice. So oh my gosh. last time I tried to do a bike ride, all of them tried to follow me, and it was like such a disaster, and all the neighbors were watching my three-year-old and barefoot running after me it was so dramatic so I haven't gone bike riding since then but I will try to pick another time and do that (laughs) well gosh just the way you described it makes me want to go hop on my bike right this minute because it sounds oh it sounds wonderful it's it's a lot of fun yeah it is it is yeah Yeah. 
Well, I guess, uh, you know, for me, I just found like the more I indulged in that frivolous self-care, um, the more I like, you know, my husband would be sitting right next to me all of a sudden. I'm like, what, what are you doing? You know, like he wanted, he wanted a piece of that. He wanted to be, he wanted to know why I was so smiley and happy instead of, you know, crying and, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, true. Yeah, yeah. so that was, yeah. that was, um, how I created, you know, I became that irresistible magnet to him without even, mm. it's just the same as when he fell in love with me because I was, it, I was happy yeah. then too. Right. So, yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I got pretty excited about that bike riding thing, even though I hear it was a fiasco the last time we're not going <laughs> to, not going to repeat that, but yeah. Oh. And just see, hearing you laugh and stuff like, I just think, yeah, I think that's pretty attractive. So, um, how would it be to just, uh, I mean, I, I, and I guess, how old is your baby? Um, she just turned five months old. Five months. Oh. Okay. So I just think it's, it's a lot of, it's a balancing super challenging. Oh my God. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, hundred like, percent. Yeah. You know, as a, not yeah. a mother, I'm always like, how do people even, right? I don't <laughs> even understand. <laughs> oh, you, you, you do great. You do great. Oh, it's just, you, you know, it's whatever challenge we have, you know, you just have to. Just yeah. Remember these skills. Yeah. So, so so I'm wondering how it'd be to just um try to fit in some frivolous self-care every day. Mm-hmm. How would that be for okay. you? Is that possible? Even? I, think, I mean, is that you know what? like I asking you to jump well, on a you know, skyscraper or something? <laughs> it's not too bad actually. I can I could probably manage a little bit here and a little bit there. Okay. Um yeah, I think I can. I think I'm trying to usually when I think about self care at this point because I'm trying to be like realistic, I just think about the basics. But I do see your point, and I think that it's totally manageable because it's not like I'm going, you know, on a marathon. It's just around the neighborhood. Yeah, so it's not, um, yeah, that's not a big deal. Good. That sounds and, good. And um, yeah, and actually, you know, the other day I did go to a water park, but I had my in-laws with me. So we had like four adults on hand to take care oh, of everything. Great. And that was super fun. And I literally, when I, I mean, this, I haven't done this since I was a teenager. I was like, well, I must be really depressed because I was like screaming down the slide. <laughs> I was just having the best. I did not even care what people thought. That's how much like I needed purple self-care. Um, yeah. I was having so much fun. And then I, and my husband sent me a picture of myself going down the slide. He sent it oh. to me. So oh. I was like, oh, he never takes pictures of me. I guess uh, he thought this was funny or great, or I don't even know. But I had the time of my it. life. So actually, maybe doing some water, something water related would be good too. Ooh, I love that. So you yeah. already have two things, the biking yeah. mm-hmm. and water stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see you grow that list and maybe post, post a list of, because you get to like 10 frivolous things, you think? And post it in the Facebook group? Oh, um, yeah, maybe I could do it. Maybe I could do it. Okay. Um, or as many as you is, can. Is, okay, I'll try. Yeah. Just I, think, I think also like, just, I think whenever I get that time now, I just value time so much that yeah. when I do get a little bit of it, I try to block out all the noise and just be present and truly enjoy it, no matter how short it is. And I yeah. feel like that that helps a lot too. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, a two hour thing, it it can just be, you know, 10 minutes, but I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to really take it in. And that helps me a lot. So yeah, I hear you. I'll try to come up with 10 things. And um, I got two. So that's good. You do. You're like, yeah, you're fifth of the way there. And it sure is fun to hear you (laughs) talking about having fun. So you're yeah, you're on your way. I mean, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's gonna bring him back yeah, you're going to make that distance get really, really small pretty fast in my experience. Okay. Um, yeah, with that, that happy, you know, goddess fun life that you're bringing to us right now. We're totally all seeing that in you right now. So Aww, I, I mean, when he sees yeah. that, I'm sure he's going to find it irresistible as well. Yeah, and I also like the idea of the smile campaign in the sacred morning that everybody smiles and gives hugs and stuff just to set the tone for the day. So that's something that love it, I love it. As well. So I try to keep that, be aware of all those things. So thank you. Good stuff. Good stuff. You sound like a great mom too. So thanks for coming on and sharing, Amina. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, um, we have Jody here. Hey, Jody. 
Hello. Hi. I'm brand new. Today you are? Yeah, I just joined. <laughs> Welcome. And you raised your hand already. So excited. Oh, yeah. Figured I might as well dive in. Right? You might as well be really brave, right? Yeah. Wow. Ah, love that. So What's when your- you were talking about the three topics, Um, It was not hard for me to come up with three really fast because um, I feel like over the last couple of years, we've just been in this like cycle of, we've been married 21 years. Our kids are grown except for the surprise that's here at the house, 13 year old. And um, so in the last couple of years, we've just been in this cycle of arguing about the same thing, you know, like we'll be good for a month, three months, six months, a year, and then we'll have a big blowout and it'll lead to blowouts, you know, pretty regular for a few weeks. And then we'll go back to not arguing. And um, I had found your book in February and read it and implemented some of those skills. I read The Surrendered Wife and The Empowered Wife. And it's like, you know, it's like everything. If you practice it regularly, you fall off the wagon and everything goes back to crap, basically. And so um, last week, my husband told me that, you know, for the last 10 years, he's just done what I wanted him to do. And that um, he feels like he doesn't have a voice in the marriage. He feels like that um, he, he just is not walked all over, but he just doesn't have a say so in anything and you know the so I put the three arguments are basically his mood and his attitude um and then we'll argue about his distance you know like he'll be distant and work a lot and I'll feel like he's not spending any time with me and I mean when we do spend time with each other it's great but then you know it's it's never enough for me he says I always set the bar higher and then he feels like I don't trust him. You know, after all these years, he feels like I question him and don't trust him. And so, yeah, that's where I am. Ouch. Yeah, that sounds pretty painful. Um, gosh, I, I'm so happy you're here because uh, you just remind me of me. So um, glad we found each other, Jody. But tell me, so of these, so what I'm hearing of these three conversations, I think the big headline for me is this distance. Mm -hmm. One where you don't feel like he wants to be around you in a way. He's choosing work and other things and it's pretty lonely, it sounds Mm -hmm. like. And it's never, never really enough. You get little crumbs under the table, but never the feast that you're kind of waiting for, it sounds like. Right. And that sounds really uh, painful, I remember. And, um, And then there's also this message that he feels like he has no voice in the marriage. And it sounds like things kind of came to a head just recently with that. Is that, mm-hmm. have that right? And it's something yeah. scary in a way. It, yeah. it really was. I mean, I honestly asked him if he was planning on leaving and his response was, I wouldn't be any happier without you. So that made me feel a little better, but <laughs> it still was really scary because we've always been the couple that everybody is like, Oh, you all have such a great marriage. And you know, now here behind closed doors, it's not. <sighs> Yeah, that sounds, it sounds heavy. It sounds stressful, tiring. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about, well, so let's take this one about him being distant. Um, did any of the, did any of the strategies kind of pop out at you as like, that might be something I could, I could try on or that might, or not so much. So when I first read your book, the one that I immediately tried was the gratitude. Um, I've never really, thanked him for anything you know and he he said one day um when we were talking he was like you know I do a lot of stuff around here that you don't even notice I'm always making sure that this is done and that is done and he said you just think that that's an automatic you just think that's what I'm supposed to do because I'm your husband and so I just started like paying attention and thanking him for things and um I've seen it work it's just getting me to do it on a regular basis yeah, which is part of why you decided to hang around all of us, I think, right? Oh, okay. exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I think that's so smart. I love that. Uh, that's, that's why I'm still here too. Like, I need the reminders. I'm always like, you know, you say something, I'm like, let me write that down, right? Because it, 
because I just like to keep things fresh too. So, but I want to acknowledge you. That takes a lot of humility, especially if he's saying you don't appreciate me and you're like, okay, I'm going to start appreciating you. Who does that? Nobody, right? Usually you're like, yeah, I, you know, you should do that. I mean, I think a typical human response, right? It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's your job. So you do that. So I admire that you jumped right into the gratitude and it sounds like that created some more connection. Is that right? It did. And then I ruined it because um, we have a history of me like um, trusting him. He's never given me a reason to, but I came to the marriage with baggage. Sure. And um, a couple of years ago, I he had caught me snooping in his phone and it really felt like a betrayal to him. So he asked me to stop and I did. But this past week, um, I knocked some stuff off of the counter where he put he owns a business and he puts all of like his bank statements and stuff and I knocked them off and they fell on the floor I genuinely was not snooping like I just picked it up and saw that he'd been at this bar and I didn't know anything about it and so I called him and was you know didn't even like just raw emotion just complete raw triggered emotion I was tired of you know like I own a business I also work full-time and everything was piling up and I was really tired and I just called him and basically just, you know, asked him like, why was he going to this bar? And when in reality, like it was a restaurant, it just had a Mm. bar in its name and Mm. he had taken a contractor there for lunch, you know, and it was no big deal, but he felt like I was snooping again and he hasn't been able to get over that. And so for the last Mm. 10 days, it's been, well, not 10 days. It'll be a week Friday. It's been really, really tense. Oh, Jody, that's rough. That is rough. I get it. So, and I just love, love, love your accountability. Like, hey, this is, this is my baggage that I came to the marriage with already. I, I was already afraid before I even met this man that um, I was going to suffer a betrayal, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, I used the I used the um I was on the coaching call yesterday and I apologized. I you know, I apologized for disrespecting him for not trusting him because I would never admit that I didn't trust him, but in that moment I didn't trust him, you know, and I realized that after the coaching call and so I apologized and he gave me a big hug before he left today, which oh, was you know, good. <laughs> and no, that's beyond good. That is that's huge. That's um very brave and, and humble. Takes a lot to get those words out. Was that hard to say? It was. I tried not to cry because the coach yesterday had said, you know, drop the tears. <laughs> and so um, I wanted to cry, but I didn't. I held it back and I just let it out and then went on about my business. Like I didn't explain. And when we got in bed last night, he was like, can you explain to me why you're apologizing again? And <laughs> So I did explain then. <laughs> I love it. He's like, can we hear some more about that apology thing? So, so you know what, Jody? What I hear is that your vulnerability came through loud and clear, and that's why he had to come in for that big hug. He could not hug you probably in that moment, and it sounds like um, it really created. It really brought back a lot of the connection and the intimacy you were having before, like eleven days ago, right? Yeah. I'm super impressed by that. That's good. You're brand new and you already did that. That's in one day. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> oh, you are. You're bringing it. You're bringing it. You're motivated. I hear it. I, you sound uh, yeah, You sound like this is really a priority for you. And I admire that. It much. is. I mean, I value our relationship. I feel like he's one of the good guys. Um, and, you know, the first time I read your book, it was like a smack in the face that, I mean, I'm a nurse and so I'm always helpful, right? Like I I always have an answer for somebody to make something better. I'm always encouraging. And so to hear that my behavior had made him feel like less of a husband was painful, you know? Very painful. I'm sorry I slapped you in the face when you were reasonable. (laughs) I think I needed it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, I'm just happy we're together right now. So, um, so it sounds like you're taking lots of action already. And in some ways, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, to me, that, that seems like the most important thing you could have done was apologizing. Yeah. I, I really want to give you a gold star for that. Um, and, and I also hear like, this is painful right now. This is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so what about your self-care, your frivolous self-care? How's that? Going? Yeah. So it's been pretty bad lately just because of um, all that's been going on. Um, and I am starting to notice that when I make time for myself, then, and I do the things that I know keep my brain in the right space, then I don't constantly worry if he's going to leave, you know, or because that's, that's the biggest fear I have is that he'll leave. And I feel like I'm going to make that happen if I keep acting the way I am. It's terrifying, isn't it? I remember feeling the exact same way. I'm going to make him leave if I keep acting on this fear that he's going to But I don't know how to stop it, you know. Yeah, but 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 you kind of do. You're you're learning and you're you're stepping right into the actions that in fact you even said when you're telling the story and you saw the bill with the name of the bar on it, like I was depleted already. I I work and it was I was worn out, right? So and what I hear you saying is you kind of you you get that when you're feeling filled up, it's it's less likely to be hanging out in your brain that you, that you go down mm-hmm. that fear, let that malware run uh, and act on that fear. Is that, do I have that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's some frivolous self-care on your list? So one of my favorite things to do, I have a convertible and my favorite thing to do is put the top down and go for a drive. <laughs> and Fantastic. yeah, I haven't done that. in probably like, I was looking back because, um, I was listening to one of your podcasts and, and I think you said to like write down three things that you do every day for for yourself. And I did it from like the middle of May to the first of June and I kept it a running note in my phone, like so that if I ever was like, what can I do today? Because I can't even think of what to do. I can look back and see some other things. And I stopped it on June first. And it was like June fourth that all that happened with the well no it was June 11th it was last Friday whatever and anyways it was shortly after that that I you know had the I I had the issue with going through the bank statement and um so I've started that back very good very good I love the convertible riding in the convertible that sounds great talk about wind on your face uh what else is on that list for you um, listening to music or connecting with one of my friends. That's good too. That's good yeah. too. And so, um, and you, and you have, you're back on this. It sounds like, is that? Yep. Went like, to dinner with five of my friends last night and boohooed. They all boohooed with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. But it filled you up. This gave yes. you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so I hear you're on your way to making yourself ridiculously happy. Is that? It's just being consistent. Okay. Okay. So, um, and you're telling me about it. So I'm going to be checking up on you to make sure that you yeah. <laughs> had some fun, right? Right. <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, that's probably what we do, right? We all hold each other accountable in a way mm-hmm. for uh, making ourselves happy, ridiculously happy. And I hear that that's, because uh, uh, I mean, I really hear the other stuff is, is happening, Jody. You're tremendously accountable issued that apology you did it with beautiful vulnerability um things are happening so you're, you're doing a lot you're doing a lot if you've only been here one day that's been it's been a tremendous day i would say yeah yeah i think um my next thing he has um i've always done the bills only because when we were really young and married he said i'm i can't i won't pay the bills like i just it's just not what i like to do and he said and so i just started doing it and have always done it and he, um, that night that he told me, you know, that we had the big blow up, he told me that he wanted to know if it really cost us this much money to live and was asking all kinds of questions about the budget. And I was like, the budget is an open door. Like it literally lays on the desk right there for you to see at any time. I, you know, I'm not hiding anything. So I really liked um, what you talked about earlier about when he starts questioning that we, we will, 
I hope that we will eventually make it to the part where he takes over that. But right now, I don't think that's realistic, you know, just because of everything that's going on. But I, the next time he starts questioning me, I've already thought in my head, like, I'm going to say, you're such a good provider. Thank you for the lifestyle that we live and see if that helps with him questioning me about it. Oh, fantastic, Jody. You're, you're doing great. You're doing great. And I, I hear you saying is you have a desire to relinquish that bill paying chore and that might give you more time to ride around in the convertible. Right. And, right. And I love that. I mean, there's, uh, you're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. And uh, it's just hard to do it in the moment. You know, it's hard to. Well, it's, it's all new, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's just, I know for me, it was like uh, a lot of the stuff it wasn't that hard. It was just new. And then it took me a while to remember to do it because I mm-hmm. was just doing my old stuff. Felt so familiar. But uh, you're making a, a heck of a start. And I, I can't wait to hear the ending to this story because I've seen this movie. I really like the ending. <laughs> I think you're going to like it. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, well, thanks for coming on and sharing. And uh, yeah, glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And Melanie's been waiting this whole time. Melanie. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I sure can. I sure can. Thank you so much for the time. Uh, Absolutely. Amazing. Here for two hours now. I know you um, have. I would hate to get <laughs> missed because, yeah, you were very yeah, patient. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to. Oh. Uh, I want to take this chance to thank you and um, also Coach Darlene. I know she's on this phone call. Um, and uh, this is probably going to be my last month for now. <laughs> I'll probably come back in the future. I wish I could just stay. Like, I really, I, I love it. I love the program. I love the group. I love the coach. You know, it, it's, a, it's a good way for me to, like, keep me um, you know, not going astray. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I joined the group uh, or the program in January this year. And I was the resentful um, breadwinner wife, main provider. And that was me for five years. Uh, we had always had a lot of fights and just attitudes and um, just resentful. I was miserable, unhappy for like five years. And then I joined this program and with Coach Darlene's help, I, uh, I pretty much transformed that in about two to three months. And I've just been sticking around because I'm like, I just want to continue improving and um, everything else in the marriage relationship is good. He's a great husband. Um, but like I said, I just you know, there are other things that I can improve besides the, um, my original big challenge, which was the financial or being a resentful breadwinner wife. <laughs> so all that completely changed. And now, um, <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he pays for everything. Uh, I pay wow. the mortgage, but I don't mind it. That's the only thing. It's just because it's attached to my account and it's easier to just do that automatic. But I don't look at anything else. He pays for everything else. And um, not, you know, it's not just the financial portion, but other things like just doing more than he's done in the past. Um, chores, uh, other, just taking care of everything. <laughs> and he gets to the point where... Um, I think one time he said, I, wait, you're being lazy. <laughs> he called me lazy. Oh. <laughs> and, and this is, this topic is perfect because, you know, even though, um, I, all that, you know, the resentful and being a financial provider, uh, went away in two months or three months versus being in it for five years. Um, I, uh, you know, there's still sometimes where, there's attitudes and or um the base i guess there's base and all that on in other areas so that one part um so yeah like he does so much he does everything to the point where he called me lazy because i was no longer doing all that stuff anymore 
because he was doing everything now. It was almost like a compliment in a weird way. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, I used to pay for everything. I used to plan everything. I used to do everything. And now he does all that to the point he called me lazy. I love it. <laughs> but um, love that it. was definitely a bait. <laughs> but it was a big accomplishment in a way, right? Like this yes. is, It's almost like a your award <laughs> for, yeah. for, for the transformation yeah. with a miracle in your family where you feel taken care of now. And yes, for sure. Not and so resentful. Yeah, that's correct. And so, you know, of course, there's always going to be a little bit of, um, you know, here and there, there's some attitude like he's, uh, he's Brazilian. So he's got his Latin fire in him. <laughs> I call it that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's perfect. And uh, what really helped me uh, with the uh, my resentful and being a breadwinner wife was pretty much the um, uh, SF, SFPs, yes, SFPs. Um, and what was the other one? Um, consistency. I definitely did relinquish control, you know, give everything to him. <laughs> and uh, the consistency, for sure, that helped me a lot. Um, and so now with the attitudes from time to time or debates or complaints, I think I'll go with the SFPs and yeah, I, I'll what, go with that one. What, 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 what's your SFP going to be? Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, I think one of them is going to be, I know that you like that you want me to feel safe. I know that you, you, that you protect me and keep me safe because he does it in other ways. And um, that's dealing with the, because recently it happened where we kind of got in an argument in the car and, and he started to drive aggressively and I was just <laughs> really scared to death with that one. So it, that was his way of dealing with his anger and Unfortunately, I was in, in the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's going to be one SFPs. Um, and then the other one is like something small. Like he complained about me carrying, me having so many bags to take to my sister's house for the weekend. And he had to carry all that in the car. I didn't ask for him to carry it, but he does it. He does those things. He just does a lot now. And when he com- he was complaining and having a net about it, but um, so I definitely use the gratitude. I thank him. Thank you for always carrying all these bags <laughs> and carrying mm-hmm. everything for me. So why? And, yeah. So I'll just have to continue with that. Um, and I'll consider his suggestions about consolidating the bags <laughs> into like one big bag. How, how did so, he respond after you thanked him? Um, he he was okay, but he still kept going on and on about it. Like he was at the at the very heated moment, I guess, for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just let him be, and I duct taped, and I just got quiet. And so good, Melanie. Very and good. I said, I don't want to. I said, I I don't want to argue anymore. And I just duct taped, and that was in the car. And so that's when he got aggressive with his driving. But when we got home, it was quiet all night. I just let him be. I just let him be. And then later on, he comes around behind me and starts sniffing my neck and my face. <laughs> and, and later on, I found out from, <laughs> from the Facebook group that you can look at that as his mentology. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, that's probably his way. <laughs> wow. Of, yeah. 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 He found you irresistible. He had to sniff you because yeah, he yeah. so much, right? So, and you're laughing as you're saying this, which tells me like this feels good and connected and intimate. Yes. And I just uh, want to congratulate you. Great job. Thank on- you. And so I appreciate the, especially for today, the, you know, the, with the baits and, and not giving into an argument or not, or not going into an argument. Um, I like that you provided, you know, this examples and ways that you, um, we can use it and try to handle that better next time. Um, and I appreciate, you know, the ladies calling in. I, I get, I learned a lot from that. Um, and 
uh, yeah, I'm just very thankful for your work, uh, the coaches, the ladies in the Facebook group, the whole program. And I've been telling my, I've been sharing this with my other girlfriends. So um, yeah, I <laughs> very, very thankful. So I wanted to share and take this chance to be able to and meet you, I guess, uh, virtually. <laughs> um, the person who wrote the book. So yeah, it, it's it's a it's an honor, pleasure to meet you and to be able to talk to you right now. It's really nice. Like I'm talking to a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is so inspiring to hear of all your success and your happiness and how you're you're sharing it with other women. You probably. Uh, become a coach with us someday. You sound like a future I have coach considered to it. Yeah, I, I bet. I bet you sound like <laughs> oh, you've got an incredible transformation in your marriage. Yes. So that's uh, that's the goal for a coach, right? That makes that's what makes you qualified. So thank you. You'd be fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks for waiting on all this time, and for your beautiful compliments and gratitude. I'm glad we got to meet too, Melanie. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, I feel very filled up and inspired, right? Tara's going, wow, Coach Taurus. Yeah. And and she's another uh, big part of what makes this campus so special and why why you guys come on and thank me, right? Because something Coach Tara said to you yesterday, probably. Uh, so thanks for being on this call with us, too. I really appreciate you. If you'd like to be my guest on the Empowered Wife podcast and share about how you fixed a struggling relationship using the six intimacy skills, I would love to interview you. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest to let me know that you are willing to make a big contribution to ending world divorce by telling your relationship story. I look forward to meeting you. That's lauradoyle.org slash podcast dash guest. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, I'll share three common myths about relationship coaching. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that I got a new tablecloth and pretty pillows and some flowers for our patio table. And now no one can sit there.